Tom Scholey, author of Jack Kirby, The Epic Life of the King of Comics and Fantastic Four Grand Design. I'm Matt Zioli. And welcome to the American Movie episode of Total Recall Show. Yeah. Uh, rest in peace, uh, Mike Shank. We, mm -hmm. Like, There he is. There the he screen. is. Oh my God. What, a, what, what a heart. This guy, you know, has so much heart. Great friend to mm -hmm. Mark. If anybody doesn't know, American Movie, it's this documentary where they follow this guy who's like, where, where is he? Like in Detroit or something? Or, or I think uh, they're in uh, Flint, Michigan. Or Mil uh, Milwaukee. Okay, I was gonna like say I was gonna say Flint, Michigan. It's like a sequel to uh, to <laughs> Roger, uh, Roger and, me. and Me, but it's it's like that same kind of thing. But it's it, you know Midwest kind of like forgotten, you know Rust Belt, Rust Belt kind action. of thing where it's like you know people trying to make something happen. It's this guy who's got this vision. He's gonna make a zombie movie. And uh, and kind of like right before like the zombie movie explosion. You oh know? yeah, kinda like really good timing. But he was going to make like a George Romero style zombie movie, and he's going to use all the resources at his disposal in the city. He's going to use like local actors, you know, people who like. I mean, you know, they're not living in Hollywood, so it's like these are like people who who you know maybe do like local productions or whatever. Yeah, you know. and uh, he uses his family too. His family. mom is like yeah. working overtime to help right. him out, like. Yeah, it's like a DIY kind of thing. And, like, I could so relate to this. And when I first saw it, I could so relate to it because I was doing, like, DIY comics. And, you know, it was I was also, you know, doing, like, film school stuff yeah. and things. So it was, like, this this hit very close to home, you know. I love the, um, just, like, his passion mm -hmm. and uh, the fact that, like, you know, I, I like when people round a group of people together to do something. Well, yeah, this is like the, this is like the Andy Hardy movies of the '30s, where it's like uh, it's like Mickey Rooney, and it's like we, you know, there's some something going on, and it's like the way they can like fix the problem is they they put on a show, so everybody in the oh, neighborhood yeah. puts on a show. Got to It's like we have to put on a show to save the rec center. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that kind. Of, yeah, like uh, Breaking Two or something. <laughs> like uh, Mark is really like he's driven. Yeah. And I'm glad that he put his, his he has like a cult of personality around him, right. kind of, and I, I, which I think you need to direct. Like it's not, it's not like oh here's some like weirdo doing his stupid movie. It's like, like there's there's like a Hollywood version of this too. Some forceful personality, maybe, uh, you know, almost a sociopath <laughs> who's got to like you know do this impossible task, which is make a decent movie. Yes, you know, against all odds. You know? I love it. And yeah. At least he's, like, not running a cult or something. Right, right an actual cult. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, who knows? <laughs> I, yeah, like, when, when they're banging that guy's head against the, the, the cabinets. <laughs> I like how, I mean, you're right. He's got to have a real cult, per, like, a real uh, forceful personality because he was cold calling his neighbors to be extras. Uh -huh. I'd be, like, uh, I'd, like, chicken out or something. Yeah. Even at, like, um... And yeah, he's banging that guy's head against the, the cabinet, <laughs> which remind me, I gotta send you, it was Kurt Angle versus Shane McMahon <laughs> at uh, King of the Ring. Uh -huh. He did this, I think it was a, belt, a German suplex. He was trying to like throw him into this, through this glass window, uh -huh. but it didn't break. So he did okay. it like multiple times. Yeah. Till it, like, broke. And if it's not breaking, that means like you're taking the full force. <laughs> yeah, the, this t Tim Chom Schimmels is getting his spine compacted again. <laughs> <laughs> I love it, like... I mean, there's so much to relate to, and it's such a great cast of characters. And um, like, I love. There's like the one guy who's like the thespian. He's like I super love serious. that guy. Man, uh, check out that compute that word processor oh, he's typing on. Delicious. Where, where like you fold it up, and like the screen is just like it's as big. The screen's as big as the keyboard. The keyboard as it folds up. Ch so chunky, yeah. so robust. You're right. That thespian guy. He's yeah. got the open collar, the, the pulled back hair. Because well, we have came. we have that in Pittsburgh. Like if you go see a local <laughs> production, there's like there's one guy. I I uh, refer to him as the thrice baked <laughs> ham, <laughs> and he gets like he gets huge applause, and like the audience goes nuts. But he like. You know, he's the best. He, like, really overdoes it. and you know, Awesome. The thrice-baked ham. But the, I would see um, an M these local uh, productions around here until the theater closed. But I saw the one time I saw Dracula the uh, musical, I oh, think. Oh, man, yeah. And it was, talk about, like, I'm, you know how, like, I'm, I'm not a hater, yeah. but, but, like, their level, it was just, it hit me, it was probably my, my it might have been the fav, my favorite thing I've ever seen live. Yeah. You know, that, that, those kind of, like, hammy actor, like, you know, 
there's there's room for one of them in every town. Every town has oh, one. There's oh, not yeah. there's not room for more than one. I can do a little bit of show business right now. Um, I'm thinking for like maybe even next week. I'm trying to get a hold of a copy. I ordered it at the library of the like stage play of Dracula. You know, they had the the, the Bram Stoker's novel. Yeah. And then there was like a stage adaptation that Bella Lugosi starred in, and cool. then it became like the basis for the movie. I want to check out this stage of that adaptation, so maybe we can read it, kind of see, because like we've re we've read the novel, and that's maybe we could do an episode of the novel, but it might, you know, since this is a little more of like a Halloween. poppy kind of show, you know, maybe like the 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 stage play. That sounds great. I'm gonna break out my uh, corduroy jacket <laughs> for it. Yeah, uh, spats and uh, yeah. tails, <laughs> right. tucks and tails. <laughs> then the the credits for American movie say music by Mike Shank, and such so a good guitar player. Yeah. What a great friend he is. Good, good friend. Yeah, good friends are, are hard to come by. And, and yeah, he is, you know, that's 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 how he'll be remembered, you know, as like a good friend. When he was talking about his, he's like, no, none of my extras showed up. We just got Mike, Mike's here. He's <laughs> like, yeah, like, then he was hanging out with his Uncle Bill. I hope he wasn't just trying to shake him down for his <laughs> decay or whatever. You hear all the stories, because there's like those famous stories, like, you know, Robert Rodriguez, you know, just like going super deep into credit card debt and yeah and, and like not too different from from oh, yeah. this guy's journey where it's like uh you know beg borrow and steal to get the money and then yeah recruit your family get like everybody you know coven uh, coven yeah that, that was that was like the big thing in the in the movie is like coven he doesn't want it to be called coven coven sounds stupid the title of the movie coven sounds stupid it sounds like oven <laughs> it's coven it's coven you know so that's kind of the thing you remember now this this documentary, so you see him make this documentary, and, you know, it seems like part of the intent is to goof on him, kind of. You know, like, like the filmmaker's intent does, seem, like, and that has become a, uh, like, a winning formula for these documentaries is find a goofball, follow them around, <laughs> and, like, make fun of them. But, like, you know, but it's in a documentary style, so there's no laugh track and you know nobody can accuse you of making fun of him because it's you're just showing what he does. But there's a lot of editing, a lot, you know. And so, like that was the like I really enjoyed this movie the first time I saw it. But part of the DVD extras was you get actually get to watch Co the movie Coven or Coven. And when they show the movie within the movie, like when they go they have the premiere of Coven, the way they cut it is they just emphasize all the goofy stuff. So you're like. Man, this movie's a piece of shit. It's kind of like the Music Man, where like at the end the band's playing and it's like, <laughs> you know, it's like they just, they just kind of stink, and and it's like, ha ha, this guy made a shitty movie. Shit. Isn't this isn't this great? But the the extra had like the full actual movie. You could sit and watch the full movie, and like the full movie, the actual Coven without the you know documentary makers, you know, editing it for humor, is actually like a really solid zombie. Definitely. Movie. Like great plot too. Like um, he he's like uh, in it, it's like AA uh, or like he goes to AA, but they end up trying to like kill him. Yeah, right. Yeah, because it, like that was the other thing. It would have undermined the premise of this documentary if at the end the guy actually made like a really a good movie. movie. Like it has to end with him making a shitty movie. But he did, in the real life is that he didn't make a shitty movie. And I think he even talks about it with within the movie that like a zombie movie, like that sort of, you know, George Romero tradition of zombie movies can't just be about zombies on a rampage and people killing them. There's gotta be some kind of like social, larger message. Yeah. You know, it's gotta be addressing some real world thing. And Coven has that. It, it's so awesome. And like, I, I tell you what, like, the, I think he, he cast it pretty well. Yeah. Like, yeah, like, even, like, his mom, like, really delivers, you know? Oh, definitely. Yeah, they have him in here, he's kind of, like... Because he, he, he is a goofball. A character. He's a character, and, but... You I see mean, those angles, and, yeah. like, in the movie, and, like, the locations and everything, like, it, it's, it looks fucking awesome. Like, I don't see him as being any more of a goofball or an oddball than, like these, like, celebrated directors, these people that we, so, we sort of lionize and, and talk about on, on the show. Um, I think it's almost like a classist thing where it's like he's middle America, he, he wears, you know, kind of shabby clothes, he's got a mullet and, and uh, you know, thick glasses, so, you know, so we're going to make fun of him. But it's like he's, he's you know, he's, 
he's got you know he's got what it takes he's got you know this movie makes me it makes me very happy <laughs> yeah yeah it's interesting because like I do, I do enjoy this sort of for this like faked reality that the documentary makers make about like a goofball and his his ragtag group but it you know kind of there is the a, <laughs> dishonesty of it kind of gets me a little a little angry you know it like hits you emotionally too with like uh he has his like family problems yeah. and like he's like drinking anybody. drinking some uh brewski like trying to mm-hmm. sneak brewskis on the side and stuff the, the 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 other thing that I came away from this movie with is the whole scratch off thing the scratchers <laughs> yeah. you got to get your scratch off cards and that's some real shit too where uh Mike's like, I won tw- I won fifty bucks, but I don't want to tell him I won that because they'll like try to borrow the money off. Yeah, of them. <laughs> yeah. Like those are the stories you always hear of like somebody wins the lottery and it like ruins their life or whatever. You know, because like the the vultures come, come out, in, you know? come out Cause, of the woodwork. Because you can't win the lottery and have it be a secret. You win the lottery and then it's like all on a, in the newspaper and, st- and so like everybody's like <laughs> looking at it like okay, think, you know, have the total recall. <laughs> you know what? You know what the thing is? It's like. It advertises that you're a sucker, too, because it's like, here's a sucker with a lot of money because, like, you know, playing the lottery, that's for suckers. So this guy was, like, the one guy in a million who actually wins the lottery, so he's a sucker with a lot of money now. Let's go get him. Get him. Let's roll him, you know. (laughs) And here he is with the cut-off. Cut off gloves. I love like, his outfits in this. Yeah, I I feel like these um these fashions have really aged. Like at the aged well. Like at the yeah. time, it was like that was like another thing to sort of make fun of him for. It was a sort of uh, you know shabby uh, shabby clothes, out of style clothes. But yeah, like uh, you know that that's a hipster look. Right oh now. yeah, you know somebody's selling that like Nike shirt for like fifty bucks at some like vintage clothing store. I like how his dad was. M- uh, mad because he was like cursing in the movie, right? Should... Oh yeah, you're so much better than this. Why? Yeah, yeah. Why can't, can't, can't you, make, can't you clean up your act a little bit? Yeah, I'm down in the blankets in the basement, and he's just drinking a beer. He's like, I'll be up in a second. Yeah, and so of course, like you know, that sort of um, I don't know catharsis through art or or sublimating like your issues into art. So it's like it's a guy who you know drinks a lot, and then he makes a zombie movie, and like engages with you know real life stuff like you were saying yeah. like uh you know uh yeah, yeah, yeah. the AA, like uh, alcohol support group kind of stuff and you're like we have a cast meeting coming up or like talk about the storyboards i mean this is awesome this stuff. is like a dream team now okay was did they ever make a big budget hollywood version of this with like actors play? you know how sometimes that happens yeah. like, like a documentary will come out and then somebody will make like a uh, like like an acted movie. Oh with, yeah, with, I don't you know. think so. Okay. Be- what was there ever a musical? Did they ever make a, a I, American movie the musical? I don't think so. So there wasn't an American movie the movie. There wasn't an American movie the musical. Uh, no American movie the animated series. Now how about what's the name of the guy who's the the uh, director in the movie? Uh, Mark Borchardt. So did Mark ever? Like, did he go on to have like a Hollywood directing? Because I feel like this is like great. Like. I'm not, you know, like I, recruitment. Like you'd be like, okay, let's let's give this guy a budget. Okay, we saw what he did with a budget of what fifty thousand yeah. dollars, whatever he got from his uncle. Uh, let's I'm let's give him a hundred thousand. Gave him like yeah. an actual chance. Let's like, give him a million to work m- with. M- uh, Mark and Mike had a cameo on Family Guy. Okay, <laughs> they, they were on at uh, playing themselves on there. I mean, because I feel like the fact that this didn't lead to like an actual directing career is sort of classism. You know, like kind of looking down on him because yeah. he's not. He's not fancy, you know, and then um, and then also like just the premise of the movie itself and, awesome. and, and how it shows like like the, the punchline is like what you know, what a shitty movie coven is. And like, you know, you got to dig deep. You got to go in the D- the DVD extras to actually see the movie. And like after you've seen this, you'd be like, man, I don't want to sit through like the actual coven. So it's like kind of like if they had done coven justice and actually they- sort of shown it, like maybe that would help. It's kind of like. Uh, you know, like everybody who works on Howard Stern, they're like, "How are we supposed? If you retire, how are we supposed to get a job after this?" Because you know, you t- like you talk about Baba Booey as like the worst producer ever. He's been your producer for like forty years, but you th- you talk about how inept he is. And then you know, like when Jackie was on the show, you talk about how unfunny <laughs> Jackie is. So it's like, how's anybody supposed to get a job? You know, you got to kind of you know put him over, put him over. Yeah, you don't you don't got to shit on everybody. And and he Mark gets shit on in this movie. Like, you're right, Tom. How is has he not gone to Hollywood and like they put people put him into the mix? Yeah, because I've seen him like have some bumpers and do some things on like G four and stuff. Oh, okay, and like uh, 
So, so I mean, that's a career too. So, I mean, so he had like he's not just like in his basement and like he, like he didn't just like give up on his dream or whatever. I don't think so. After this, he was on Letterman a couple times. Okay. So like a Harvey P car. So like showing up on Letterman as a weirdo. As, yeah. You know, as like a, had, a loser. Or this something. great um he was covering the election, like the Bush Gore election. Okay. And I gotta show you the clip. I, I I come back to it a lot. I like watching it. He he goes back to Menemi or wherever he's from, uh -huh. falls um I can't remember, but yeah. the, his town, and he goes around. He's like, I partied there, I partied <laughs> there, I partied there, I partied downstairs there. Like, so he, he parlayed his personality into kind of like a, a personality thing yeah. for, for a little Great. bit. Letterman loves him. Yeah. There, there was another. Uh, well, that's doing him a lot of good now that <laughs> Letterman's retired. Like, it's kind of like, um, like a Don Quixote kind of thing, okay. where it's like, you know, we're celebrating the human spirit and and working hard in spite of. You know, uh, a, a, an almost absolute chance of failure. Mm -hmm. You know, we, you know, we, we kind of we're kind of celebrating these people, but it also kind of reinforces this idea that like you're not going to make, make it. it. Like, don't don't even bother. Like, here's a guy putting all this effort into it, and what's he get out of it? He gets to be kind of like you know goofed on in this in this movie. It, it, it kind of pumps me up, and it's like makes me want to cry at the same time. Uh, yeah, yeah. It's it's interesting. It's interesting how something like this functions. He's also kind of like. Um, He's kind of like Billy Mitchell in, in uh, King, <laughs> King of Kong, Kong, where he's got like a lot of swagger and like, yeah. uh, you know, the, nothing stopping him, you know? Yeah, like everyone, you know, he's got his good friend Mike there and like, uh, at least it's not like he's like come down to like the weird like cult-like room. Yeah. And, like, <laughs> but he manages to get all the people together to put the movie on. Oh, here they are putting in the... Uh, Love these scarecrows. The scarecrow. Yeah, and look look at the machinery he's using to make the movie. He's using, like, the same stuff George Romero would have used. Yeah. Like, he's using these, like, film cam cameras and stuff. Around this time, you know, it's, like, made in, like, 96, 97 yeah. or whatever. Like, I was so into that stuff, too. Like, digital was starting to, like, really come around and really, like, catch up. But I was like, man, I don't want anything to do with mm -hmm. digital. You, you know, that. but the, the romance of those, you know, the big canisters Physical. and stuff. But now I'm like... Fuck all, like, I mean, this, this is, we're not filming this on 16 millimeter or whatever. There's this, like a, a guy director, like, cranking yeah. the camera, but. Exactly, like, we're all digital, like, and I wish back then when I was making my movies on Super 8 oh, and 16 man. millimeter film, I wish I was like, you know, like, Mr. High Tech, like, I wish I would have been, like, embracing the new technology, because I could have made, so, I could have gotten just so much more practice, I could have made so many more movies with digital, because yeah. the digital stuff was pretty accessible, pretty easy to use. Uh, you know, but I was like, man, I don't like the look of video. But now it's like you know that you can you can fuck around with it and and make it like not look like video. Yeah. Or or you can embrace the the video aesthetic, you know. The uh like Michael Mann. Yeah. David Fincher. Uh the, the thing I think of is like uh if you ever saw Shin Godzilla, it's like this Godzilla, mm -hmm. it's it's like one of the best Godzilla movies ever made. It was made like maybe 8 years ago or something. But it's like filmed, you know, digitally, and it looks almost like documentary footage. It looks like like it looks almost like, uh, you know, somebody filmed it with their phone or whatever. But it makes like the Godzilla feel very immediate and very like real and very much like coming into our world and not you know. That's awesome. Yeah. And um, if you haven't seen the Steven Soderbergh movie Unsane, okay. he filmed the whole movie on an iPhone. Well, that's the thing, because like, I mean, I'm I'm a frustrated movie director I'm, I'm, like this guy at least you know is uh, you know he's Go going further than i like i made some student movies and stuff i never did anything as ambitious as coven but like this total recall thing this is a form of filmmaking we are making film we are telling stories and i'm like i'm kind of thinking like like we can build this into something like like we could we could maybe do like a fiction thing yes. or you know like there's still no, it's like total recall studios total recall studios and you just you, you know you kind of start 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 small and like build build on it. We we've got some uh, total recall uh, irons in the fire. Yeah, we there's do. There's some do. like nuggets like nestling on an open chestnut yeah, that's roasting. There there's, there's some, uh, some buzz. buzz. There's some buzz in, after our, our trip to Hollywood. We, yeah, yeah, we there's were some buzz buzz because we were um we you know <laughs> take a lot of meetings, a lot of lunches. Uh, man, so, when you see the interiors of the car, like how like how nostalgic is it? Like the interior, like don't so you wish you were in a car like that looked like that. 
There was a, a close-up shot of Mark's uh, clock radio and a cassette player, yeah. and I was like, we had that. Yeah, that's the thing. Like, when you're living through this era, when you're living through the 90s, it just feels like it, now. It's just like, oh, this is the... Ne-. You don't realize how yeah. cool and uh, nostalgic it is <laughs> until it's, uh, you know, 20 years later, 30 years later. And this movie's so beautiful, too. Like, I love when he's showing, like, the snowy, like, fields and everything. Yeah. And his the scenes he's picking out for, for Coven, like, I'm like, this is... It reminds me of, like, Western PA. It basically. does feel like Western PA. I mean, you know, this, like, sort of Milwaukee, Wisconsin, and Pittsburgh, they're, you know, they're not they're not too, uh, you know, they kind of, especially at this point in time, they sort of had a lot in common. They've, they've kind of, you know, gone their own, each city's gone their own direction, but they had a lot, of, a lot in common at this time. You think about this sort of pre-smartphone era, yeah. where it's like, I don't know that, you know, like, this group of people is making a movie now because everybody's just like like you're kind of um you know your 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 free time's kind of occupied now you know popping like little balloons on your phone oh, or, yeah. you know like like they don't like here it's like what the fuck else are we going to do i guess we'll i guess we'll be part of your movie you know return of the living dead 2 yeah. shirt that he was able to wrangle all these people like analog you know yeah. calling them out putting like a yeah, posters foot, up like you know footwork you know hitting the street you know yeah like you see them like cold calling people. They got a phone book out, yeah. like yeah, the yellow pages, the yellow pages, like the white pages. I did take out. We have the Total Recall ad in the yellow pages. Yeah. If, you, if anybody, there, needs there'd it. be no excuse not to make something like this because you could you could like get a team together so much easier. So so you know people are so connected now, but they're all kind of connected and not really doing anything. They're you know they're kind of connected in their in their, womb, ways. in their womb, like <laughs> incubating or whatever. This is real connection yeah. here. Man, look at that camera. Yeah. The episode has a little bit of a tinge of hint, a little twinkle of sadness for yeah. Mike. Yeah, this episode's dedicated. Dedicated to Mike Shank. This snow scene where they're filming the snow scene with like all the all the you know uh, warlocks or witches or whatever in their outfits in the snow. This is like I'm thinking uh, of like Irvin Kirshner filming like the Empire Strikes Back snow oh scenes. Oh my god! And, you know, he's like down on the ground getting those low shots. Again, his his cinematic. Uh, instincts and, and and stuff are on spot point. on yeah and he, and he's also you know he, like you know talk about the 10,000 hours or whatever he's got that like he's been doing you know same as like Spielberg or whatever he's been doing these sort of home video movies yeah. with his buddies uh for years and this is uh you know proof, proof is in the pudding yeah this this um I, I don't know what he did after Coven but this could be his magnum opus I I was checking him out uh I I, I couldn't find it recently but he had he he has he's he was on YouTube yeah but he had like one video on there okay and it was him and like his daughter going to Dairy Queen yeah I can't find it anymore I don't he was talking it was funny like he should have like well that's a the podcast thing. That's, that's the thing like Coven I I could only be so lucky to make a movie as good as Coven now yeah like why is it why doesn't he have his Total Recall show how come yeah. he's not on YouTube. Uh, you know, and, and again, he's got the, the he personality, <laughs> so why not just... Uh, yeah, we'll have to, we got some research to do. Yeah. Uh, you know, this, this, is, this is like our marching orders to go see what... What, what um, um, Mark's up Mark's to. We've been watching the American movie episode of The Total Recall Show. I'm Tom Scholey, author of Jack Kirby, The Epic Life of the King of Comics and Fantastic for Grand Design. Matt Zioli. And you can find me on Twitter at Tom Scholey or on Instagram at Tom underscore Scholey. Follow me on Instagram at cinema underscore tomb. And please check out my Patreon. Go to patreon.com, search Tom Scholey, and you can see various comics that I've been working on for the past three years, I think, at this point. You can follow the show on Instagram at total underscore recall underscore show. And we'll see you next time. Ah! No, here's a Mike Shank scream. Ah! Ah! <laughs> Yeah, he's. I'm, I'm wearing my tie dye, like in honor of. In honor of Mike. Mike.